Here's one of them. Patrick Johnson of the Province and Post Media, Canucks beat writer. Alas, not a golfer, though. No, sorry, guys. That's yeah. never come I mean, I, I enjoy I, I'll have some fun. I, it just it, it never took. Well, come ride in the cart. <laughs> it never drank the beers, taking the fantastic scenery there at the Whistler Golf Club. No, he doesn't sound interested. Why don't I just go? Sure. I'm not going to. I'm not <laughs> going to reject a, an invitation. Yeah. I'm not going to yes. reject an invitation. It's a kind invitation to spend time with Matt. How about a trip See to the, Nashville yeah. for a Nashville patio? Would you do that? Patty on the patio. Yeah. I've only so I've only ever covered one game in Nashville. It was the end of the 1819 season, mm. and uh, you know, as as is standard, and this is not complaining. This is reality. It takes you all day to get there because you have to mm, go through does. somewhere. Yeah, and uh, so so I arrived at. I don't know, eight o'clock at night or something, get to my hotel. I literally don't know. Anyway, I know vaguely things. I get to my room. I literally get a text from Corey Hirsch, who was the radio commentator at the time, saying, Come to Tootsie's. I had misplanned. I'd misplanned my day too. So I hadn't eaten since who knows what time. So I ended up there and, um, you know, let's say there were sort of several members of Canucks coaching staff there and they were buying people Bud Lights and that's just how it went. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah. And then I got home and, you know, by back to the hotel and had the 1 a.m. $30 uh, room service cheeseburger. That mm -hmm. was my dinner. Yeah, so that's, that's why I uh, yeah, it was great. Did you hear Wagon Wheel by chance? No, what's that? That's a country song that's been covered by do, about 12 Do you even people. Nashville, bro? Yeah. No, I don't I don't know any. I don't know. Wagon Wheel, that. Darius yeah. Rucker? The answer is yes, he heard yeah. it. Like, you yes. can walk down the strip there, the Broadway strip, and hear, like, one verse coming from one bar, sure. the next okay. verse coming from the next. If you played the song, I'd know it. I don't know yeah. names. By the way, it's not Don't Darius names Rucker's song. song. He just is the latest oh, guy okay. to gain fame from it. Blake, give us a few bars. Remind I, us. I, I'm not very versed on that song. So, so. rock me, mama, like a oh, wagon Oh, that one. Wheel. That's called rock. Wagon Wheel. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. There yeah, that go. was on a lot. Hey. Well, hey. No, no. Grady, Grady, Grady. One thing we try to discourage is Grady singing on the show. That wasn't people. bad. That wasn't it bad. is. That wasn't bad. We have Grady regard did. for people's eardrums, Grady, but mm. thanks for your continuous jump in ski this week. Grady, hey, you guys may have heard Grady's had a social media presence in the past. Maybe you guys should send him to Nashville just to do that. In the past. Oh, oh I love the in the past oh. thing. Like he has been. I love it. I love Dude, it. I was Twist. chugging hot sauce out Maple Leaf Square, eating yeah, spicy salsa oh. every time. Seattle hot sauce, man. Musket. My goodness. Uh, you seem to have done a lot of digging oh on the schedule here. So uh, Sunday start at Rogers Arena. Yes. I, I, I do understand it is going to be a 7 p.m. Yes. start. The uh, evening yes. doubleheader, I believe Winnipeg is going to play before the Canucks, Winnipeg and Colorado. And then Tuesday at yes. Rogers Arena. Yeah. Uh, alas, there's a, uh, there's a concert Thursday Tim McGraw. in Bridgestone. Tim McGraw ain't moving for shit. Yeah, so I think you're getting Friday, Sunday in Nashville for three and four. Okay, and then you're then we the one thing we always knew, no matter who the Canucks were playing, was that Game Five would be April 30th because April 29th is Justin Timberlake opening his world tour, and then May 1st and he ain't is moving either. Twenty one Savage, but I mean April 30th it had to be April 30th. 30th will be Game Five, and then I've just had a few people pass along some nuggets because you're sitting here going, "What the hell are they going to do for six and seven? Because as people may know, Pearl Jam is here, also opening their world tour for two nights, May fourth and sixth. And the wow. idea that you could simply push one of those around, I mean, I suppose. But the point is, you took the money, so you're not going to pay the money back to move the shows. So you're going, okay, does that mean they're going to somehow do like back to back on two and three? And I kind of tweeted about this last night. Of course, people went bananas, missing the nuance, being like, I don't know what they're going to do. But what I've gathered, it sounds like what they're going to do is at least game seven. I think game six will be like the third because you'll get two days off cross country, whatever. Could be the second. Um, but game seven is going to be on the fifth. Between you, the Pearl Jam shows, they're gonna tear down the stage, tear down the stage, load in the trucks, drive the trucks out, park them somewhere, I guess, play the hockey game, 
bring it all back in and do it all, do the concert again, which, you know, I mean, there'll be substantial cost there. So it'll be interesting to see who's paying for that. So Pearl Jam roadies are really hoping the Canucks wrap this up yeah, in six Yeah, that too. And then yeah. the other fun wrinkle for the morning, I mean, everyone, I think people, of course, pointed out the sun runs happening on Sunday morning here, is that May 5th is the marathon. So the morning will have interesting variables, whether that's for team access to the building. I mean, it was, you know, like loading in, morning skate, like, because their boulevard is closed from 6.30 to 9.30 as well. I understand it, so... Holy hell. Yeah. <laughs> we forgot about all this stuff, right? Scheduling in the spring. Well, but This honestly, is as elaborate a uh, thing uh, as I've ever heard. No, but does would anybody in this room, if put in Canuck Sports Entertainment shoes, not have booked these shows for this No, week? I don't think so. I get no. it. Like, we all would have gonna... done it, right? Because, yeah. number one... You've gone all these years without the playoffs, which have yeah. hurt revenue. N number two, there's no guarantee you're going to make the playoffs. In fact, at the beginning of the year, you were less than a 50-50 bet, right? Most people had you out. The bookies had you out. Well, I almost wonder, too, like, is the day off in between, was that for this very reason, or was that because Eddie wanted to rest the vocals at, to start the Well, the, I think the, the for the most part. Eddie wanted an off night in Vancouver, yeah, one maybe. of his favorite I, I think for the most part, Pearl Jam don't play back-to-back -back anymore. Oh, really? Wow. Interesting. Like they yeah. do have or uh, later on this on this tour, they they play back to back in LA, they mm -hmm. play back to back in Berlin, they play back to back in uh New York. But for the most part, if they have two shows in a city, they're taking a day off. And it's oh. got to be 100% about wrestling the vocal cords. Yeah. So yeah, the only no. thing that I would have said, you know, like if I was if I had been I would looked at it and said, "Listen, like I you you're going to have to think carefully about all the what ifs." I mean, you couldn't have had them go on the fifth and the seventh. They don't play again until the tenth in Portland. So, but you know, I, yeah. So let me get this straight, Johnson. You you know the nuances of Pearl Jam's tour schedule, but you don't know Wagon Wheel. I mean, I didn't know the name. I know the song. I never knew that song was called Wagon Wheel. I'm that's, impressed that you know it's called Wagon Wheel. That's priorities. How does one not know Wagon Wheel? It's not because at what point do you usually hear that like song? It is now? the it's country a, and it's the night. I think country country music fans if you've roll been their eyes once, at wagon. They roll their know eyes wagon. at wagon. Are I know the song. Me? You know the are name. you kidding me? As soon as wagon wheel comes on, the woo girls are in full yes, force rushing the... to the dance floor. Blake is the mayor called... of Wrongville. Yes, absolutely, oh. Grady. I'm I'm moving into Wrongville with with Blake here. Give me a break, man. Uh, what do you make of their decision to rest Besser, Miller, Ronick, Cole against Winnipeg? I'm not surprised. Um, you know, the Besser one is not a big surprise given, uh, you know, the reported banged up, whatever it means. Like, he's still been scoring. So I've been trying. And he was, honestly, we had Brock yesterday. Amazing mood. Like, he was an absolutely great mood. Great mood. Jeff asked him about the Sedin's retirement game. And I wish you guys could have seen him light up. Like I'm not. I don't think the video captures quite how like Brock stood up taller. Like he, he, the memory sparked him. So you know he is he is clearly feeling very good. So whatever it is he's dealing with, I mean, obviously he needs it off. Mm -hmm. um, Miller's had a long season. You know, Cole. I'm not surprised. Um, I guess I'm a bit surprised they did not find a way to get Friedman in there as well, or get two defensemen in as well. Um, Miller you know, would have blocked the shot, so it's you know, you got you got to guard against that. Cole and Miller would have blocked shots tonight. Yeah, that's what I mean, right? Like exactly, yeah. like it's things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the the moment Dallas got to overtime, we all knew it was going to be not. I mean, Talkett was trying to play coy, but you knew that he was had in the back of his head. If, if is, there's something to play for. Is Hughes play. playing only to defend the scoring title for defensemen, or is is it just they feel like it's lower risk? I think it's lower risk. I think it's just, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit. I asked the other day, um, I guess it was last week, you know, because Ted, the bus driver, who um, drives the bus for the daycare and after school care, asked me, hey, I noticed at the game the other night that they're only using the big guys at the end of the game that Hughes wasn't out there. Did you mm -hmm. notice that? I thought it was interesting. That was a good question. So I was talking about it. And he basically said, listen, no, it was exactly what Blake's talking about. He yeah. likes having the big guys. The guys are going to block shots. He said, Quinn Hughes is a very good defender, but he defends in a different way. And I think that's exactly goes back to what you're asking here, Blake. Is that 
Quinn Hughes. We know the way he plays, which he takes the puck away from you and he doesn't let you have it. So there's just, there's less, I think there is less risk there. Your take on the matchup though, Canucks versus Preds. What's, uh, what's your analysis? Uh, how much of a favorite should the Canucks be given both of these teams are, are kind well, of uh, hitting above their weight class? Yeah. I mean, I think people are, they're, they're, I think people have missed two things. You kind of go on the wrap. You know, UC Saro has been a great goalie. He has not been a terribly great goalie this year. He's been pretty average. Um, and, and the Predators have not been very good defensively. It was funny. I, I'm, I'm blanking now on who it was that had the piece of analysis the other day, but they were talking, it was, a, it was probably last week. It was sort of the Predators kind of run out of the season. They've, they've stumbled to the end of the season. And part of the story was that they were not defending the slot very well. And you remember who, I mean, certainly early in the season, but I think even lately, who, who is pretty good at generating shots from the slots, the Vancouver Canucks. So you, you balance those t- two things against each other. And this, I don't think it's going to be a short series. A lot of people, oh, it's going to be a short series. I'm not. It's the playoffs. The playoffs are, you know, it's so rare you see a short series. And yeah. if it is, it's because it's a team like Colorado playing Nashville. Um, you know, I just, the, but the, maybe the Canucks will do that. They'll put it away. I, I, I don't think it'll be short, but I, I think, I think in general, it's going to be, you know, it'll be obvious on the aggregate when you add up all the goals for and against, it'll be obvious who the better team was. And I'm pretty confident it's going to be the Canucks. Is uh is scoring? Okay, so give me the uh, how many games? Games played? I think I mean six, right? Like six, mm-hmm. it, it, five just does to me. Just feels I, I just don't feel it's there. I mean, the Canucks obviously swept them this year. Um, I think it'll be six. Do the Canucks score a lot of goals in the playoffs and in this particular matchup? Be because Nashville I'm, just goes. There's a lot of goals generally wherever Nashville goes. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I, it is the playoffs. There's, that's kind of, you know, we look at how the Canucks have been playing lately, a little more risk averse. Mm-hmm. Um, if the game opens up, you know, if they go up to nothing, then yeah, they, I could see the snowball. Um, but if it's, you know, one, one, two, one, three, two, you know, that sort of stumbles along, I, I, I don't think we're going to see many blowouts. Um, but I do expect the Canucks will win a number of games, four to two or something like that. What are the minutes of the hey, big? Did, what are the minutes of the big defenseman? Is Tyler Myers about twenty <laughs> minutes a night? Is Nikita Zadorov going to be heavily used, or is is Rick Taka going to be so scared of of <laughs> poor decisions of Nikita Zadorov? Because I can see well, it both ways mm-hmm. in both cases. Yeah, I mean, I think like the way that they built this defense core and the way they've been deploying them to me. They, you know, talk has been thinking about how he wants to run these things for quite a while, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, Quinn Hughes has been 20, 24 minutes. Philip Ronick was in that range and his, his time, ice time's fallen away. Um, you know, Ronick, I'm kind of curious about. I mean, I, I nodded at this in the story the other day. I mean, he's been had a, his hat, I don't know if Jeff brought this up, but he's had a heavily taped right uh, elbow for quite a while. Um, so it's it's not a coincidence, I think, that we haven't... I mean, we've seen him ready to shoot. And of course, he had the breakaway or the penalty shot the other day. He's passed up a lot, though, you're right. Yeah, but he's yeah. passing, you know, I mean, that's not a coincidence. Anyway, but he's, you know, he, they're still playing a lot. Like, like, like Myers, one of the keys to Myers' success this season is that he has played less than he ever has, at least in Vancouver. He hasn't played this little in quite a long time. Um, that that it's, it's a very smart deployment of him, and then alongside of him has been Zadorov. So I, I don't I don't imagine there'll be I mean obviously situational stuff talk to talk it spoke about this a little bit yesterday that he is excited about this the, you know the situational coaching everything matters um the the way you dial in like at the end of the day they want to play Quinn Hughes as much as they can and every time you put a guy like Myers or or Zadorov on the ice is you're taking ice time away from Quinn Hughes uh, who I think will be upwards of 25 minutes. Yeah. Like, yeah. That could be the low maybe, water mark. Yeah. 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 Like, is there any argument against playing Quinn Hughes more? Do you know what I mean? Like, no. like, like no. he's going to play more. It's not going to be playing less. No. And that's going to come at the expense of a guy like Zadora. No. Um, especially since, I mean, let's face it, you're hoping to go far, but I don't think anybody's expecting they're going to lift a cup this year. So, yeah. you know, ride your horses here. Yeah, you know, don't, don't yeah. worry about tomorrow. Today is the yeah. only thing that. If matters. any of these games get to like a three goal lead in the third period, though, you yeah. staple his ass and yeah. give him a rest. Give me a, <laughs> give me a guy you think can be playoff hero here. Uh, a, a guy you think is poised to up his game for the Stanley Cup playoffs and make a mark on this series. Well, I. Uh... 
is it easy to say too easy to say Connor Garland's? Um, no, no, I, I mean, in many ways, you know, it was nice that Dakota Joshua got his back to back unsung hero, but I, to me, it, how was it not Connor Garland? Like the guy, the way the guy has done what has been needed night after night after night. And the way he plays and the way he understands how to, in fact, use his his leverage being low to the ice to take advantage of other other teams' defenders. It's been such an, a fantastic story this year. So, yeah, Connor Garland, I think, is going to be a huge story in this series, partly because, in you know, you've got the you've got the Miller line, which has been playing well. I mean, that Suter Miller Besser line at times a couple months ago were the one of the best two-way lines in hockey like they were so dominant in terms of shots and possession um but you know and then Pedersen is obviously with Hoaglander and you know, I guess Bikayev or whoever is going to draw attention those lines are going to draw attention there's a big role to be played for Connor Garland and sort of that soft soft minutes on the third line so yeah he, he's, he's the guy. I think I, I think that's a great answer I, I could absolutely see that it's funny you asked that question I got a text from Tomlinson yesterday uh, look saying he was looking forward to our Chris Contos <laughs> for the playoffs. It, 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 yeah. Does Garland count as a Chris Contos? Is he, is he too oh offensive? God. I think you guys need to update your reference is what you need to do. Like, yeah. <laughs> there was another while. name he threw in there. John Drews. Yeah, that was the other Blake one. Yeah. Was very, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Drews and yeah. Contos. Yeah. Boy, give me 23 John Drews as they win the cup every year. <laughs> the Calder Cup. <laughs> yeah, Dave, come on. Stop telling on yourself. We know who you played with. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to say Dakota Joshua. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's a great, well, size, the size helps yeah. in this kind of a, of a game. Sure. I like how he, I like how he gets inside. I, I, I like the hands. Uh, the thing, the and thing about him, he's become so like, he's robust. His game is so robust, but it's so smooth. Like the way he just goes and yes. does it. Do you know what I mean? That's a great he gets show. It done. He uses his strength. Like he doesn't look big guy awkward very often. Oh, no, exactly. At all. Yeah. Even in tight quarters when he's got to manipulate the hands, which is really difficult when you're, you know, that high. And uh, a decent shot the other night. That was a shoots he scores no, goal exactly. with a good shot. Honestly, the way he's come back from injury, like he did not miss a beat. No, like fantastic beat. stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know what? The, the great pairing with Garland. Like I go back to what he told me yes. before Christmas that he's he this is the most fun he's ever had playing hockey is when he gets to play with Connor Garland. Yeah, nice it's of the Canucks. Good. Nice of the Canucks to give uh, Thatcher Demko a nice long runway, uh, mm-hmm. forty shot runway to uh, welcome back uh, into the National Hockey League action. Um, there's the possibility he doesn't finish the game tonight. Do you, do you have any problem with that? I personally do not. I think you 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 get him what he needs, and yeah, yeah. If you, know, you, you want to make sure he gets the reps and he's ready to go, and... if he gets fifteen or twenty shots in the first two periods, take him out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't think that night. happens. I, I don't think that's that's not certainly not what Tockett's looking for. I mean, he still wants his team to play the system and play smart. And the Jets are resting their guys. I think this is going to be like a one-one game. The yeah, only I reason it so. won't be a tie is because the NHL won't let them have a tie. Um, mm-hmm. it'll probably go to a shootout. It'll be one of those games. It'll, it's just yeah. going to be. It's. I don't think. I'm not expecting a thrill ride tonight. That's for sure. Oh, that that Stars Blues game. I watched the end of that last yeah, night. Yeah, exactly. And, and that actually had some gravitas to it because the Stars were trying to win the conference. But that, that was dreadful, dreadful to yeah. watch. So, yeah. 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 Okay, buddy. Uh, well, the Stanley Cup playoffs are here. <laughs> we know the opponent, and we're pretty sure on the schedule as well. Thank you for your edification. Uh, are you going to Nashville? No. <laughs> yeah. No comment. Yeah. Oh, well. Could have been a chance to. Uh, Brush up on your country in Western. Yeah, I could have you know, I could have made you all kinds of videos, Matt. Mm-hmm. That's the real life. Join us in studio here. We'll even play wagon wheel. It'll be exactly. just like you're there. <laughs> there we go. Hey everybody, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Sakaris and Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.